Switch me on. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack is Not a Toy. My name is Matt, and today I'm going to be talking about one of the details from Ghostbusters Afterlife. So this is your one and only spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the movie, do yourself a favor, go see it in theaters. And uh, if you would come back and watch this video afterwards, that'd be great. But uh, beyond this point, I'm assuming you've seen the movie or you're okay with any kind of spoilers. What I want to talk about today is the opening of the movie. Um, there's been kind of a, a hot question over the last two weeks since the movie's come out over the way uh, Egon dies. Uh, we see in the beginning of the movie he's caught one of the terror dogs and he's running from the invisible form of the other one driving away. His truck gets flipped over. Uh, he has to limp home. The, the trap field fails. He goes inside, grabs the PKE meter out of the drawer. It has the normal PKE function and um, turns his chair around uh, opposite of the door, sits in his chair. Um, the spectral form of the terror dog comes in through the fireplace and then kind of for a second you see the image of it hovering behind his head and the PKE meter changes to the taser function that is now new in this movie and then the arms in the chair pop out much like they did in Dana's apartment in the first Ghostbusters movie and grab on to Egon. It then cuts away and we see the, I guess, the orb form of the terror dog flying out of Egon's farmhouse and back to the mountain. Um, some questions that have been raised, one in particular, is what did happen exactly in the sequence? Did, uh, was Egon killed by this terror dog in the struggle? Um, or did Egon use the taser on himself to basically commit suicide or take himself out so that he would no longer be a living host for this terror dog to inhabit that could then go and get the trap out and release the other terror dog and then start the, the sequence to bring Gozer back to this world. Um, so that's a interesting question that has come up and we have people that are on both sides of it I've seen in, in some comments um, just online and I've kind of gone both ways on it I've kind of you know first liked the the idea of it felt kind of heroic that the Egon would use the taser on himself the way of thinking a step ahead of the terror dog that's like you can't use me if I'm not alive um, but the more I'm kind of researching and, and hearing from uh, people involved in it, uh, the making of the movie, I'm thinking that that's not necessarily the case. That it may have been indeed a heart attack, as Phoebe says there in the movie, just the struggle itself, trying to fight off um, the arms in the chair uh, or whatever other manifestation of the terror dog is there that we don't necessarily see because it does cut away. Um, perhaps just the stress of that whole situation is what uh, kills him in that scene. Um, I'd like to refer to the Ghostbusters Interdimensional Crossrip podcast, the most recent episode. Uh, Troy Benjamin uh, interviewed Arian Tutin, who was the, um, the makeup and creature design artist there. Uh, and he said on this episode that that scene, there was more to it. And uh, it was uh, more violent, is the way he described it. And uh, so it sounds like there was quite a bit more struggle involved uh, between Egon in this chair and the, the arms there itself. Um, and then last night I was on the um, live stream on Inside the Booth, and one of the other guests that was on there was a guy named Stephen Shea. And he works for uh, Abysmal Entertainment. And uh, he's been involved with Ghostbusters um, over the last couple of years. And one of the things uh, 
uh, one of the projects he's worked on is the uh, mobile video game for uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife called Ghostbusters Afterlife Scare. Uh, in the process of working on that, he was given the ability to look ahead at the script way ahead of time. So over a year ago, he had the script and he was able to look at it. So naturally, being on the same live stream with him last night, I asked uh, his opinion on uh, this question, on this debate, as someone who has seen the script, not recently, but somebody who has seen something that we haven't uh, overall as a community. And he says, from his recollection, he didn't really get the sense that this was Egon committing committing suicide or taking himself out in a way that the ghost could no longer use him as a host. Uh, instead, it was more of uh, being attacked, fighting for uh, just a struggle um, for his life, um, and then using the taser not on himself, but as in a way of uh, self-defense because that was the only thing that he had at his disposal as he hurried into the house and dug quickly into the drawer. Um, another thing that has been pointed out in some of the posts I've seen online are um, the assumption that the ghost the, of the terror dog that he did catch, the spectral terror dog that he caught was Vince Clortho, which is the one that needs a male host. So he caught the one that needed a male host. And so with Zul being the lone terror dog coming in to attack, it didn't have the ability to uh, take over Egon's body because Zul needs a female host. And um, we see later on in the movie, Callie is possessed by Zul, and when Trevor has the PKE meter in his hand and it flips over to the taser function, which raises the question, does it do that on its own? when it, there's a threat nearby, or is that something where you accidentally hit the button to activate that part of the, of the function of the uh, PKE meter. Um, but going back to it, um, as soon as it flips over to that taser mode, Zool, or Callie, goes to the other side of the chair, which happens to be, I believe, the same chair where Egon was killed, and cowers behind it and growls, and then um, seconds later jumps out the window and runs towards the mine at the mountain. Um, so which would, we could take to believe that um, Zul knows what that taser feels like and was defending itself by kind of hiding behind the chair uh, so as to not be zapped because it knew about the taser. Uh, meaning that Egon had used the taser on Zul and not necessarily on Vince Clortho. So these things are not completely spelled out in the movie, leaving us basically to kind of headcanon it or figure it out for ourselves for as far as we know, unless we do have something from one of the writers in the movie who comes along and does share their intent on that part um, of the story. And uh, until then, it's kind of us up to us to come up with our own interpretation of that. So what do you think? Do you think Egon took himself out kind of in a heroic manner so that he couldn't be uh, possessed by one of the terror dogs? Or do you think that he was merely just in a fight and that's the best thing he had on him and he was defending himself with the taser? Let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think. And um, we'll catch you down the road in the next episode. Have a good one.